On this episode of Locked On Lightning, we recap last night's OT loss against the Seattle Kraken, and we talk about the recent good performances from Alex Barre Boulay as well as Jonas Johansson. All that coming up and more, but first, let's play that music. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam Tanker. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Locked On Lightning. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the Locked On NHL promo code for $20 off your first purchase. On this episode, we're taking a look back on tonight's loss against the Seattle Kraken. Uh, why? This loss wasn't exactly a bad thing. We'll talk about that. What does that mean exactly? We'll get into all that. As well as we reflect on the most recent five-game stretches that Jonas Johansson has had, as well as Alex barre Uh, Before we get into all that, first, I would humbly ask you that you go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. You could also follow us on YouTube as well as on our social media platforms at L underscore lightning on Twitter, as well as locked on underscore lightning on Instagram. If you're if you're watching this episode on our YouTube channel, all that information is on the banner below. So kind of first reactions and all of that from this 4-3 OT loss. And and I'm not going to get into specifics because, you know, we don't really have a lot of time to break it down here on the show. But this was this loss. And and as well as the lightning, and I'll stay I'll stay I'll, I'll start it off by saying this is that as well as the lightning have been playing over the last week and a half or so, especially this homestead where they had a very good chance walking away at four and one, which is a pretty impressive thing to say, considering how this team really started off the season and 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 kind of looked in the first couple of weeks of the season. And 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 it, it it's one of those things where if we reflect back on how they started off, it's somewhat surprising given how the rest of the league has been playing because I think even though if you look up and down the standings we could agree to a certain extent that this league is going to be at least through the first couple of weeks has been very competitive and and even this schedule that the Lightning have had throughout the first couple of weeks of the season has been very competitive um, you look at this this the what the lightning have had to contend with to open up the season has been really nothing short of of really difficult for this team who started out the season behind the eight ball with uh, with of course without their star goaltender Andre Vasilevsky and to kind of get off to the start where they were where you know they they win I, I guess the easiest game we could say they had all season to a certain degree at least in terms of not only how the schedule looked or the matchup was on paper, and then you look at what the outcome was and how that game went. Nashville was really the the easiest game the Lightning have had. Um, since then, really, it, it hasn't really been any kind of a let-up. I mean, if you want to look at how San Jose was, I that going into that game... I think we could all agree that was just very much a just let's not mess this up. I think six nothing to a certain extent. You know, we didn't expect that Jonas Johansson was going to pitch a shutout. I mean, maybe if there was any game on the on the schedule going into the first couple of weeks, that was probably the game that we were all going to pick in which Johansson was probably going to throw up a donut. But since then, I mean, it, it hasn't really been easy traveling for this lightning team 
Um, but as we all know, they they get into a little bit of a groove, especially at home, one of the best home records over the last couple of seasons. And they have a chance to really finish it off here uh, to start the, the first month of the season against a very good Seattle Kraken team, you know, regardless of how you feel about them, regardless of what you may or may not think that they lack or they, they provide in terms of performance. All that matters is how they play in this game against Seattle. And what you saw was really a stereotypical game from the Tampa Bay Lightning, historically speaking. And when I say historically speaking, I'm talking about over the last couple of seasons. When you look at really how this game started as and, and how it ended, really none of us should be surprised. The Lightning get off to a slow start. Uh, get out, score three to one in the first period. Start to get it together. For, second period looks a whole lot better. Start to play some of that vintage lightning hockey, especially you know you can't say vintage lightning hockey without saying that the lightning are playing from behind because that's really something that we could all agree on. That is something that is really just their 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 MO or whatever you want to call it, their, their calling card, because I, you know, we're not going to get into the whole spiel about that, but I mean, that's something that the lightning have had to contend with for the last couple of seasons. You know, that's just how it is. And it's by their own doing, you know, at the same time, Seattle played very well in this game. I thought that first period was, you know, as much as we could say the lightning did not do enough of, Seattle came out of the gates playing like a team determined to put this game away in the first period. And a lesser team probably, we could probably say that that would have been the the instance there. You know, especially when you come out of the gates shooting 20, out shooting a, a team 20 to 9 in the first period. Uh, it doesn't get any more deflating than that. But Time and time again, like we've seen in the second period, the Lightning get into a groove. They start to play very physical. They start to wear down the opposing team, and we saw that from the second period on. Putting up 15 shots in the second period and then going on in the third period to outscore Seattle 13-5. to five Goals in this one coming from Alex Barre-Boulay, Brandon Hagel, and Tanner Janot. And we'll get into Barre Boulay in the second half of this show. But really, the thing that is really troubling for me in this one, and it may not think it may not be what you think it is. It's more so. You know, we, we've talked about numerous times on this show, and, and I'm not going to go fully in on Cooch because at the same time, he had eight shots in this one. His plus minus was minus one. What are you going to do? At the same time, you know, in a game like this, where the opposing team is taken to you, and, you know, depending on what state of mind you feel about this hockey team, one could say that this was a very important game considering especially it's the last game of your homestead and now you're going to play four on the road against some very tough teams. Columbus on Thursday, you got the Senators who we all are familiar with at this point on the weekend and then back-to-back -back games uh, in Eastern Canada against Montreal and Toronto. So very important game and yeah, in in past episodes, we would have probably crushed Kucherov for not scoring in this one. But my thing is, is that, you know, the guy did really all he could in this one. He had eight, he had eight shots on goal. And, you know, it's one of those things where I, I'm, I'm, I'm not bashing him. It's just you got to score or you got to make things happen. And, you know, there are some nights, and I will argue for him, there are some nights where you just don't have it. You just don't have it. 
you just don't have it in the tank. You just don't have anything flowing for you. So that's where you look towards your teammates. That's where you look towards the guys, the other leaders on the team to really help boost everybody up. And the one guy that who I really thought played very well in this game was Victor Hedman. I thought Victor Hedman really was just, he was on everybody's radar in this game. And when I say everybody's radar, I mean Seattle. Uh, he was doing a good job of circulating the puck, making him the total focus. Uh, had two shots on goal from the point. Uh, no, and, and that was the key, I think, to the Lightning getting back into this game. It was him. It was Sergachev. Those two guys really, you know, regardless of not getting any points, I thought really made a lot of things happen. And we talk about oftentimes on this show how really that's the name of the game with this Lightning team. You know, you need to draw attention to yourself. Regardless of not, you're going to be able to score on that play or on that sequence or even in this game, got to draw atten uh, attention to yourself. And this was just the game where, you know, we, if you don't have Kucherov doing that, if you don't have Sergachev doing that, if you don't have Hedman doing what he was doing, this game doesn't go to overtime. This game is pretty much done, signed, sealed, delivered in the first period to the Seattle Kraken, and it's an easy night for them, and they go in their jolly way. Having said that, you know, the only thing that we could say is that hopefully the other guys on this team are able to get things going. You know, Tanner Janot, he's been playing very well. He had two points in this game. Uh, would have liked Sherry, would have liked to see have seen Sherry have a goal in this one. I, I thought that towards the end there in the third period, I thought that he was getting some good looks and he just couldn't get one to go in. Uh, Sorelli was another one. I thought Sorelli, even though he had the assist on on uh, that last goal at Hagel, I thought he had some some good opportunities in front there as well. I just think that, you know, it's really at this point, the Lightning have played well throughout the first month of the season. And, and you know, it was really disappointing, like I said, to, to fall uh, on your last homestead, on your last home game, excuse me, of the, of the month before you go on this four-game uh, four road trip up in Canada. So, well, three-game. You know, we got that stay over in, in Columbus. So let me know in the comments below what you think. You know, very tough loss at home. The Lightning still walk away with a point in this one. So it can't be all bad at this point in time. But you know what? The Lightning, like I said, you know, just try and just collect as many points as you can early on uh, just to keep yourself in it. And, you know, I'm not saying the Lightning are in danger of missing the playoffs. I, I you know, I have to say, I, I think I very much underestimated them especially how they started things and, you know, not having Vasilevsky. I, I think, especially with the comments that I've seen on social media with people but kind of being content with them being a 500 team, that was also the kicker there too. But uh, this team has really impressed me over the last couple of weeks. I think that tonight was a very impressive game, all things considered. You know, if you take away that first, if you take away that first period and, you know, just, at that point, just not having enough in the tank to keep up with the Seattle team where in overtime, really, you know, it, it's just a matter of a lucky bounce and Seattle got the lucky bounce. So let me know in the comments below what you think about this game. Uh, we'll talk more about it in the second in the second half of this episode, as well as talk about Alex Barre Boulay, Jonas Johansson. They've been on rolls as of late. We'll talk about all that. But first, let's talk about one of our friends, one of our sponsors, and that is our friends over at Game Time. So let me ask all of you, whether you're listening or you're watching us, have you ever just, you know, decided last minute that you want to go to a game or, or a concert or a comedy event or whatever case may be, and you weren't able to get tickets last minute? whether it be availability or or prices or just whatever the case may be. Well, listen, I use game time all the time for sporting events and any type of event. 
And not only do I get my tickets on time right away, but I get them for very good prices. Now, you can too with this app. Now, you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last-minute deals. All in prices, views from your seat. Nobody wants to sit behind a barrier or a pole. And their best price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. So download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account. Redeem the code L O C K E D O N N H L for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, as always, I want to thank everybody for making us your first listen of the day. As always, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a a follow wherever you follow the podcast, whether it be on the audio platforms or on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel there as well. Really helps us a lot. Um, This episode's coming out a little bit later than we'd have liked. Just had some technical issues with just being able to upload it. But... Here we are, just recapping the game, our reflections, that 4-3 OT loss against the Seattle Kraken. A lot of positives from this. You know, I, I thought that you could always take home some positives from a loss. Unless the Lightning are, unless they're completely played out of the building, which they kind of were in the first period. Um, even then, I still think this was a winnable game for them, but... You know, that's not always going to be the case in terms of a result. Um, but they showed that they could hang out, hang out with Seattle. You know, in Seattle, I think it's a very good team. Seattle is one of the better teams, I think, that coming out of the Western Conference will make a play for the Stanley Cup. And like I always say on the show, it's it's always nice to measure yourself, whether you're the top dog in your own respective conference um, or in the league, you know, it's always nice and, and always kind of like an ego check moment to, to go up against these teams, especially for the Lightning, who I've spoken about numerous times in the past, and we saw it with the Har- the Carolina game in which, you know, they won that game 3 nothing. And if you're a listener of this show for quite some time, you know how much respect I have for the Carolina Hurricanes. And, you know, they're a team that constantly is a contender for the Stanley Cup. Uh, on a yearly basis, really, and one of the better teams in the Metropolitan Division. Uh, so, you know, it was it was very it was very positive to see that. And even tonight, you know, down three one, this team didn't give up. They they come back in the second period, just wearing down Seattle. And that's something that I really enjoy about this team. And when they're playing well, not only when they play well. Tampa and they are playing well win or lose right now the thing that I really enjoy when they're rolling in all cylinders is their ability to play smart you know the you saw tonight the thing that really stood out is that they weren't going for it all in one big shot you know they weren't trying to get those two goals back in the second period you know they weren't trying to really necessarily win the game early on in the third period. They were they were taking their time in a in a very calculated way, which ultimately got them to overtime, which got them a point in the standings, which is always a very positive thing. And like I said, OT is just kind of like I feel like you just throw all kind of concern or whatever you want to call it, just it, it, it's a whole different animal. You know, I feel like o- over time is not necessarily played the way you would normally play it in regulation just because everyone's afraid to make a, make a, make a mistake. And if you do, the game's over. But for the most part, Tampa played very well in this one. And who really played well in this one as well was Alex Barre Boulay, Jonas Johansson, especially Johansson, who really kept this team in it. Johansson has has really been asked a lot of 
this season. And we'll get into Barry Boulay before we finish up the show. But I really want to talk about Johansson because Johansson really, what has really stood out for me with, with him is that just, like I said, he's been thrown into this gauntlet of trying to keep this, not only this playoff team, but this team who has immense expectations of going back to the Stanley Cup final to, to keep them treading underwater, to keep them treading water. And, and not only, in my opinion, tread water, but to, to keep them as a top divisional team. And we've seen it over the last couple of games. You know, even that game against Toronto in which they lost in overtime, I still think that, you know, a lesser goaltender, that game wouldn't, w- would have ended worse. And I mean, a regulation loss. Um, going against Carolina and shutting them out. That proved an immense amount of, of just maturity and talent. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, when Vasilevsky comes back, this is going to be some sort of discussion to where he's playing himself into a situation that he could potentially, you know, split time with Vasilevsky. Now, having said that on the other end, you know, really how much time he does get once Vazzy's back in the picture is really dependent on 88. It's not dependent on Coop. I think I don't really think it's much. The, you know, I, I think that even if Johansson continues to play well, I think if even if when and if he does get his shots to play, even if he's just consistently shutting out teams, you know, I, I still think and I still think we could all agree it's Vasilevsky's net, but it's one of those things where I think it makes this team a lot more comfortable and playing a lot more freer because at least over the last couple of years, and you know, we could have a whole nother podcast talking about that in which if, you know, this team not playing as freely as I've seen them over the last couple of games, if that's more reflective on the goaltender or vice versa. Um, But when you look at the goaltending from Johansson, and you look at the way this team is played in front of him, I think it's an awesome combination. And I hope that carries over into, into the Vasilevsky coming back, which it seems like now I'm not entirely sure about this, but he has been practicing and working out and doing this, that, and the other thing. And that's great. That's wonderful. Having said that, that does make me nervous because – in any sport, it's not necessarily just hockey. You, you see it a lot more in other sports. When you're when one of your top players comes back and starts to work out, uh, it's it's often in the most in the the first couple of workout sessions or whatever you want to call it, training sessions. If he looks or if they look a hundred percent normal and ready to go, teams will oftentimes just jump the gun way too early. Because the player will say, I'm ready to go tomorrow if you need me. Where the teams will kind of fall into that that trap and rush this person back. And, and then I think that the Lightning and John Cooper, and, and I'm, I'm sure it's not his decision, it's a collective decision between the trainers. I'm sure Julian Brees Boss has some sort of say in this, and John Cooper... And obviously Vasilevsky. But I, I I think that not only having the positive Joe Hansen playing very well in front of you and giving you a shot to win and giving you those performances as if he was a a regular number one starting goal goaltender in the NHL, I think what it really sh- helps you, at least for this organization, is you know, it, it tells you that you don't have to rush your goalie back. You don't have to rush Vasilevsky back because it's not like this team is imploding in front of our eyes. I think this team has been very competitive. I think this team has, especially in goaltending standards, has really outplayed their initial value. And I think that, and I'm sure the other sh- the other shoe will fall, on this at some point we will get a very ugly game from Jonas Johansson. I mean it happens with every goaltender. But squeeze as much juice out of this as you can and allow Andre Vasilevsky 
to ease back into the the starting role. And I think that's the right way to go, you know, and until this team starts to kind of play poorly, which, you know, looking at the upcoming schedule, I'm not entirely worried about that because Columbus should be a winnable game. I mean, I'm not going to say that there's anything about the upcoming set schedule that we could consider as as easy. Maybe that Arizona game on the 28th, but you know, I'm not going to take that for granted. Granted, but at the end of the day, you know, if Johansson could hold down the fort and play at least 50% or 75% of what he's done in this first month of the season, I'll take it. And then you could work in Vasilevsky in the beginning of December here and there and and maybe split those first couple of weeks between those two and and kind of assess where Vasilevsky is at. And and I think that's going to not only help Vasilevsky get into the swing of things, but it's going to keep the confidence level for Johansson at an all-time high because he knows that the clock's ticking on him being at the helm. But if you just slowly work him out of it, I think that's going to help his performance and it's going to help his confidence because at least he knows he's going to get some burn and some time in net still, even when Vasilevsky comes. So let me know in the comments below what you think about that. How should the Lightning handle that situation? Because, listen, it is a situation. It may have some sort of a negative connotation in a way because, you know, the guy's been playing incredible, I think, compared to what we kind of are used to or what we would have thought in years past. Oh, my God, Vasilevsky's out. For the first two months, what's going to happen? Um, but he's played very well, and and I think that what he has given to the Lightning is more than any of us could have asked out of him. So I think that he has definitely deserved, at least for the first couple of weeks of when Vasilevsky gets back, we could have that platoon-like goalie situation and then just go from there and see if, you know, how 88 feels. So... We'll continue to monitor that. And, you know, to finish things off, we'll be talking about Alex Barre Boulay. Uh, I've been saying it all along that he deserves a spot on this team, and he has been proving it over the last five games. So we'll talk about that. But first, I want to talk about our friends over at FanDuel. Now, in case you haven't heard of FanDuel, they are America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $150 of bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet that's 150 bucks if your team wins if you're thinking about joining FanDuel there's no better time to get in on the action the app is so easy to use there's a wide range of betting options including spreads player props over unders and more listen I haven't won a bet and it's it's been a couple of rough weeks for me uh then again I broke my streak of not winning since May so I just have like the ultimate jinx right now. And but listen, I still use FanDuel and I love it. And you'll love it too. And hopefully you'll have a lot better, better luck than me. So head to FanDuel right now at fanduel.com slash locked on and get your betting experience started. So wrapping things up on the show, we're talking about Alex Barre Boulay. He has really impressed me over the last couple of, at least his last five games on the season. He has two goals and one assist. That's three points. And that's pretty much all that has been. He's dished that all out in his last three games. He he had a goal against, well, he has three now, excuse me. He had one last night, but it hasn't updated yet. Uh, on the stat sheet in terms of if you go to hockey reference, but uh, had a goal against Toronto, had a goal against Carolina, had another goal last night against Seattle, had a point against San Jose as well. And listen, he he's one of those players where I've said it from the beginning. Uh, he has shown a lot in his brief time with Tampa Bay. That 2021 season where he played 15 games, he had three goals, but still, I mean, he has proven it, whether it be at the NHL level 
whether it be during his time in the AHL with Syracuse, he's he's a goal scorer. And I get it. It's one of those situations in which there's just really no move because there's such a sur there, there's really no room for him because there's such a surplus of of talent at the NHL level. But you know, it'd be very disappointing at this point in time, you know, especially if he continues to play, if the Lightning or at least John Cooper cannot find a way to fit him into the lineup on a nightly basis. I think he is at least stamped that spot in the starting lineup for him exclusively at this point. I I think that even if it's not amounting to goals or points, I mean, last night against Seattle, he played phenomenal. I think he was really uh, on the offensive side, regard offensive side of things, you, you know, disregarding Janot, uh, and 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 Hagel, I thought really he was the driving force behind this Lightning team. He had a goal and an assist. He had five shots. I mean, he was everywhere in this game. Um, he he played physical. I thought he, you know, playing down low for a guy that small really shows you a lot. You know, it, it shows you his perseverance. It shows you his his veteran leadership, and it, and it shows you his no to. I mean, he he was moving in the right direction at all times. He was right where he needed to be. And, you know, quite frankly, the Lightning have not had that in the last couple of years. They haven't had a guy that has just been constantly visible. It it almost seems like shift after shift in quite some time. And, you know, we do get nights like that from Kucherov, you know, once in a blue moon, Stamkos. Uh, It's really been Hagel and, and Point for the most part, that we have seen uh, for for the last, I guess, let's let's call it the last year that have really been like that on the on the forward side of things. You know, Paul has his has had his moments um, and, and he is a huge part of this offensive attack. But, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where we haven't really seen a guy consistently all over the place doing a lot of things, not only physically and with his stick, but also with his with his mind with his knocky with his hockey know-how i mean we really haven't seen that since and you know i'm not just saying this because they played seattle last night but we haven't really seen something like that consistently since the yanni gore days and i i think that really you know i feel vindicated at this point if you've been a listener for this show for quite some time you know i've been the biggest alex bar fan in the world and now that he is seems like for the foreseeable future is going to be getting a lot of time at the NHL level. I think that really his veteran leadership, um, his ability to score and he's, he's a scrappy player. He's five ten. He's a buck 80. So he's not the biggest guy and yet he's playing in front of the net. So that should show you, you know, that he wants to stay here. He will do whatever it takes to stay at the NHL level and to stay into Tampa Bay. And I think that he is, he, he caught everybody's attention tonight. And, and I think that having that guy who, if I'm not mistaken, he has the, the all time points record for most points for the Syracuse crunch crunch. And yeah, it's the American hockey league and, yeah, it's the, the the minor leagues, but still, that's that's still very competitive hockey. And the fact that he has that record um, is pretty impressive. And and I think that it shows the Lightning that, you know, he could score. And we saw during the playoffs a couple of years ago that he could do a lot of things very well. So I, I think that, especially with him playing with Cooch, and and Hagel on that first line, I I just I'm in love with that. I don't know if it's a sustainable thing going forward. I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. I I do how it adds a little bit of a spark to that line, given that there are most nights in which Nikita Kucherov could could be on the ice and also not play at all and have the same exact effect. So. We'll see if Cooper continues to throw at that line. Um, I would very much like, you know, I'm not 
particularly crazy about Belay. I would prefer that Hagel's up there on the first line. You know, I don't. I'm I'm just happy that Belay's in in the lineup. Um, I do like to see. I would like to see going forward uh, if playing him down low is just going to be kind of a situational thing. Uh, if it's going to be a matchup kind of thing, uh, we'll just have to wait and see because eventually that will lead to some injuries and hopefully those aren't injuries that keep him out of the lineup for for some time so let me know in the comments below what you thought about Boulay over his last five games very impressive performance a guy who definitely does not want to play another game in the american hockey league up in syracuse so we'll keep an eye on this team um going forward like i said they got columbus coming up on thursday we'll talk more about this game later today like i said this episode's coming out a little later so you know apologies from us on that but uh we'll drop an episode later today today being tuesday so in the meantime that's been it for this episode of locked on lightning part of the locked on podcast network i'm your host adam danker i'll talk to you in the next one